Hey Blender Bob here, let's talk about motion blur. You see my hand? It's in motion and it's blurry. Motion blur. Motion blur is our best friend when we do CG. It covers all the mistakes, it covers a lot of stuff. We love motion blur and you would think that, well, in Cycle you just click, or in EV you just click motion blur and that's it. And there's more to it. Let's see. I got this scene here with a meteorite flying very fast across the screen. If you look at the first setting position, you have start on frame, center on frame, and end on frame. So this is center on frame, this is what you get. Start on frame will give you this, and end on frame will give you this one. For what I recall in my entire career, I never had a situation where I had to use start on frame or end on frame. It's always center on frame. But what is important is the shutter. So the shutter setting. In Blender, it goes from 0.01 to 1. On professional cameras, it will be counted in degrees. It goes from 1 to 360s. Why degrees? Well, it has to do with the way films were shot. Real film, not digital. It's a bit complicated, you can Google it if you want, shutter angle. Uh, let's just say that 180 degree or 0 0.5 in Blender is the regular for motion blur, the regular setting. If you go less, if you go for example 0 0.25, then you will get a sharper image. You will get less motion blur, opposite if you go to 0 0.75 or to 1, then you will get too much motion blur and it's probably not going to look natural. If you close the shutter, meaning if you put it to 0 0.01, this is what you get. It's like no motion blur at all. On the opposite, if you go to 1, then you will get too much motion blur. So normal motion blur here, the camera is moving, the people are moving, it becomes kind of a blurry mess. Sometimes it's difficult to see what's going on, but that could be on purpose just to create the chaos. As opposed to this one where the shutter is very closed and every image is like a picture. Very little motion blur. So we can clearly see what's going on and here you can see all the debris that you wouldn't see with normal motion blur. Rolling shutter, I will come back a little bit later. Okay, so let's put all the parameters back to the way they were at default. So 0.5 cent on frame. Now, if you take a close look at it, you can see there's kind of a white outline here and that doesn't look good at all. It looks really CG. And you can fix this with the shutter curve here. The default is the flat one at the end. Now let's try something else. Let's try this one here. This is the result I get. Of course, I already pre-rendered everything for you. Now you see the edge is gone. So I tried many different curves here and I think the third one was actually the best. So if I try for example uh, this one here, then this is the result you would get. Well, uh, no, it's actually this one. So you see it's kind of very small motion blur, uh, no lines, but it's a different effect. So yeah, this one was the best one. No magic recipe here, it's just trial and error. So rolling shutter, what is rolling shutter? Rolling shutter is the effect that when your sensor captures the image, it goes from top to bottom. So if you're moving the camera, especially if you're panning on the side, while you're filming something like very vertical, well, as it scans down, the object moves. So in your image, you get a diagonal line for your, you know, your lamppost or whatever is like this. So I will show you an image of what I'm talking about because now you cannot even see my face. So this is running shutter. It's also the effect that will give you this jello effect on the old phones. For example, if you had like an iPhone 4 and you shot something and you move too much, everything was like blah, 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 blah. Well, this is rolling shutter. This is what it does. Some cameras don't have this. For example, the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 4K had a global shutter. Global shutter means the entire image is captured in one time, just like that, bang. So you don't have any distortions like this. But even professional cameras, for example, an Alexa will have, uh, Alexa LF will have a rolling shutter. I think it's 7.5 milliseconds, something like this. So you have settings in Blender that you can adjust. Unfortunately, it's kind of a value from zero to one and it does, it's not in milliseconds. So you cannot say, okay, I got an Alexa, I will put it to 0 0.75 or 7.5 milliseconds. You don't have settings like this, so you have to eyeball it. So rolling shutter can give you a lot of trouble. For example, you have a window and you made some cracks in it. It's a cracked window, but your footage goes like this. Your CG is straight, so when you want to come them together, well, you get a straight CG and you get a distorted image. So you need to fix your footage. You can do it with the rolling shutter options in Blender, but it's always better to just work with a straight image, especially if you have your image as an image plane and you want to align your stuff, make sure everything fits perfectly. Well, if you have a, a crooked image, mm, not that good. So how can you fix this? Well, you can do it very easily in After Effects if you have After Effects. Here's how. This is a really good example of rolling shutter effect. So you can see the image is skewed, it's all distorted. If you search for rolling into the effects, you will see this setting here and you just need to drag it on top of your footage to fix it. So you drag it on top and here we go. The only thing you need to do is to adjust the amount 
that you want to correct. So a little bit of tweaking here and there, you can even keyframe the rolling shutter rate, play with it until you get the perfect footage. It's never gonna be perfect. So I made this scene where you get this cylinder here and the camera is moving very fast in front of it. If I render my scene without turning on the rolling shutter option, this is what I get, just a blurred line. Now if I turn it on, the default value is at 0.1 and the result will be this, a skewed image. The settings goes from 0 to 1, so if I put it at 0, I will get the maximum tilt and if I put it to 1, then it's like the same thing as not having any rolling shutter effect at all. Too much rolling shutter will also give you problems in tracking. I don't know how Blender handles the rolling shutter for the tracking because I don't use Blender for tracking. Uh, and in the compositor, I didn't see anything that would compensate for the rolling shutter. So you will have to use something like After Effects or Nuke to, to correct it. So here you go. Now you know how to adjust all the settings in cycles to get a motion blur that will fit your plate and that will look great without any artifacts. And I can tell you that the motion blur in cycles is great. It's awesome. It works so well. It's so much better than, than, should I say it? Should I say it? Oh, I don't work for the foundation. I can say whatever I want. It's so much better than Arnold. Because in Arnold, if you have highlights, specular highlights that are very, very strong, it's gonna be super noisy. And the, the radial motion blur doesn't work very well. And if you have displacement map plus motion blur, the memory will go through the roof. <sighs> I love Cyclone's motion blur. Now, it's summertime. I'm gonna take a break because I don't have that much to tell you. I have some stuff I'm still waiting to be released to show you how I did it, but it's not ready yet. And now we're starting a very, very big production where we're gonna have like 300 shots to do. Very complex shots. It's bigger than anything we did before and it's gonna take a long time to do. So I think I will take the summer off maybe time to time, but don't expect too much from me because I need to relax, all right? Okay. Bye. Okay, so I said in the title it's gonna take five minutes. Well, I lied.